Pittsburgh Bridge Collapse. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Bridge Collapse. Look at the dimensions of the steel. Now look at the dimensions of the steel. Look at the dimensions of the steel. Now look at the dimensions of the steel. This is steel. You see flaked off, flaked off. When it impacted and it turned to its side, this steel, the, the steel uh, flexed somewhat, flaked off this steel here and came to rest here. Where we see it rather, flaked off the steel somewhere. But it just flaked off. And this rust just tells you that this bridge had its life cycle. It was done. This bridge was done. You know, this bridge is done. It makes you wonder, you know, that how this, the inspectors get passed on this. Pennsylvania is one of the hardest states ever to get the inspection reports from. How many inspection reports have we got from Pennsylvania? With FOIA request? How many reports? How many have I done? I don't know. Over this many? Over this many I've done. This is how many I've received. I've direct contacted the people. Hmm. You ever, you ever, you know, there's a, <laughs> a passive aggressive way of saying, uh, I, I hear you, but I'm not listening. That's when you talk to someone and you tell them about it and they go, do you hear my, do you hear my response? That's the response you get. Okay, let me see if I can see what's going on. That's it. They never call back. It's like you're asking for money. That they don't, that they owe you, but they have no intention on paying. Zero. Zero reports. The, the, uh, municip the, I would love to see the report that turned over for the structure by the newspapers that have access to this. Now, I screamed about the cameras on the bus. They need to release those cameras. And the reporter did too. That, that bus, the collapse with the bus on it, the video, one section of it is showing. Those cameras have back, those buses have cameras in the back view, front, inside, yet we're limited to uh, what they released, what they allowed to be released. Let's go from here. So now we come here to uh, saying, showing you that I couldn't get things. Well, it took a court order. It took a court order for the CERN Hollow Bridge to be handed over. It was filed on May 16th, a court order to get PennDOT to release it. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, let's address the weight of the bus and the load limits. The load limits of the structure placed was 26 tons. You just multiply that by two and you get your thousands of pounds. So, yeah, I want to troll. That's 62,000 uh, um, pounds. So I double trolled you on that one, didn't I? I put BLS and I put 62. All right. So you can see that that is 54,000 uh, pounds is the, is the max load limit. We go to articulated bust articulated bus and we find an articulated bus weigh weigh in at about 33,000 pounds so double that right times two is I'm trolling 66,000 pounds over over now this is a pounds so you can divide that by two all right so it's about 16 and 16 is 32 so let's call it 17 round up with some fuel weight or whatever it might be. So 17, 17 tons. Now let's go ahead and add some passengers, but it's early morning. You can add another, you can make it 18 tons. But what you notice is that you're not there yet. You're, you're not even, you know, you're, you're, you're way off percentages wise. Even if this was restricted and it should have had another restriction. Well, 18 tons. So the bus theoretically didn't, didn't cause the issue, the bridge collapse. The bus was on the structure at the time it collapsed. 
my guess is the bus trans loaded onto the structure laterally and it's winter time the cabling um, was elongated they used cross ca they used cabling to help keep the structure together I think something like that and here's the bridge deck above and the winter time along for elongation and when the bus came onto the structure here's the bus is it caused a sh some shifting we get your brake, the, the brake in the bridge, brake in the bridge behind and in front. As this, this part, that section of the bridge structure starts uh, between the expansion joints, starts shifting because of the probably the cabling cross bracing was no longer taut because of temperature. That's my theory. Let's go from there. So here we have the uh, report, and September 29th. 2021 was completed uh, a report was was uh was started and completed on october um, 5th 2021 due to limited availability of under bridge inspection crane so they didn't have the this the uh snooker the let's say it can reach here's a it can reach around come under and um do inspections of the bridge structure like that this is a mobile unit drives down and you can do your inspections up high there they didn't have that now they're using drones also but um this was september so it was probably you know the weather is probably good enough to still use drones and it said due to availability yeah that's an interesting uh statement so just for you so you know this is what it looks like see it See the crane here, the truck here, it goes down and up and under and look. Here's another version of it looking. Here's another version, another version. You've seen them on the roads. You've seen them on bridges, I think. Now you know what they look like and what they're used for. Okay, there's a mobile crane one. Uh, and there you are. Bridge snooper. See it? Snooper, snooper. All right, let's go from here. Oh, I, I love this part of the report. All scuppers are 99% clogged. 100% clogged. Wow, that's the drainage system. So this had no drainage system. It had to overflow the bridge, the roof, the uh, bridge deck to get on to, you know, to escape. So the scuppers, the drains. So let's look at a profile like this. And there's the railings. Here's the bridge deck um, here. So the scuppers would allow water to go through, or they might be surface scuppers going down like that from the deck here. So it could be a scupper like that, or a, 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 a drain like that. Typically, scuppers are above. So this is your, this would be your system here, like that. Is the drain? See the drain? And um, this is just a general detail plastic scupper uh, drain drain box the uh, another scupper detail look like that to so come down is a clean out the drain system away it goes it's just a manhole down there sometimes it's just surface all right so you have, know what that looks like now so back to the report it says there are drains that poke that's their wording, poke through the underside of the deck, which are actively dripping onto the superstructure. Hmm. So they said 100% clogged, so how can they be dripping through? Uh, and are, and are, causing, are causing edge spalling, which expo with exposed rebar in the deck's underside of adjacent of weep hole locations. Okay. So... Again, this has to flood to, to get out. When it floods, it's going to have some capillary action along that steel girder, the outside girder. The water comes down, dripping, and goes like that and falls free. You would look at the ground below this area here to see if this is really so down below it. At the ground, you would look, see, uh, since it's such a, a stream of water would be coming, 
um, you would find these trenches in the ground, these worn out sections where water splashes and deteriorates, like a garden hose that you're pointing uh, on the ground and it would make a, a indent in the earth. So you would be able to f indicate where this de bridge deck is consolidating most of its water. It's a low point of the bridge deck would be where this would happen. So the bridge deck, if it's not totally flat, if it's got some type of crown in it, the water would consolidate there, flood there first, overflowing, and then you look at the ground for that. You would then look for footer deterioration, the columns, the, is it hitting, is it running down columns and causing a lot of ex extra um, deterioration, rust. Oh, this is very interesting. It says the girder portion of the weathering steel rigid frame exhibit uneven weathering and areas of heavy corrosion. Okay, so cracks were previously found in the floor beams connecting plate to girder webs. So they want the rust. This was not designed to be painted if this is their intent of weathering steel. Weathering steel, the rust itself becomes the protective coating. It's a proprietary mix by, of steel by quite a few manufacturers now, or a few of them, let me put it that way. And so the rust is a, a wear layer, a protective layer, rather. And I don't know if they truly mean weathering steel or what's their, what's their definition of weathering steel here, but that is a definition. So I'll show you, and I have shown it in the past, I'll show you a weathering steel bridge. This is one of the manufacturers, Core 10. Um, it's the, it, that's the layer, the coating. And they look like that. And it looks like that. And it's very evenly um, rusted, if you will, that li protective layer. You don't sand it. You don't do anything with it. You do not wear that away. Um, and it, there, there, there was a couple of problems with some weathering steel that went too far with their uh, rust, their protective rust. And they change the dimensions uh, down to, you know, real small, if you will. That was the bad mixes. But mostly this weathering steel, it saves a lot of dollars because now you don't have to use any protective coating. You get to inspect the structure as it is without having to strip down the uh, coating. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's got its advantages. It's not cheap. So I just... Google this right here, and this, whatever that is, states this. Um, uh, it says the Fern Hollow Bridge and the U.S. Steel Tower have in common. What do they have in common? They're both made from uncoated weathering steel. So this article was posted February 2022. So I'm not sure if they really verified it or not. Let's take a peek. Let me open up this article. So this person says, you know, they're not an engineer for disclaimer. And they, uh, they go on to state that this structure, the uh, steel tower, uh, is an iconic Pittsburgh thing in it, 1971. And yeah, that it's uh, the Core 10 product. I wonder if this is that steel I just told you about, that there was some steel that was defective on, on this, the original rounds, if you will, um, that was too aggressive in its protective coating that it kept deteriorating. Okay, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm curious. Uh, fits your budget, whatever that is. All right, let me move on. Um, it's commercial. So now we hit on salt water and metal. The combination of moisture, oxygen, salt, especially sodium chloride, damages metal worse than rust does. This combination corrodes or eats away at the metal, weakening it, weaken it, causing it to fall apart. Remember, the scuppers didn't work on the structure, so there was a lot of... Uh, surface treatment if it if they salted the bridge at all salting would have had issues i'm not i don't know if they salted it at all you'd have to look into that so if you want if you want to research it go to google this seems like a good article hit weathering steel and go to uh you know it's their narrative right their narrative is what's what they allow wiki wiki and wiki has a nice little article on it hitting on the metal composition also, you know, the locate where it's done in Pittsburgh, different artistic um, locations. Um, so, yeah, maybe uh, United Kingdom. 
Maybe you can do some research on these if you want to know the behavior of the steel. This is a long cycle of, of metal though, exposed. And maybe they did some mixing and matching of steels because the, the corrosion is, is pretty excessive on this structure. I mean, maybe even the rivets cause the reaction. This is riveted. So that's interesting. Tells you timeline of the structure, right? Rivet steel. All right, let's go on. I, mean, I I really don't know what's the point of going on. This really, if you think about it, this structure. Look at this. Nine cracks are previously found in the floor beams, connecting plate girders to web welds. It's just this thing is just, you know, it had its life cycle. It was done. It should have been taken out of service, but apparently it's needed. And you know, government they don't care. They're like whatever. You know what? Just we'll word it differently. We'll get it going, and then uh, we'll do what I call. Uh, management through crisis management through crisis this means you wait till a crisis happens and then you handle the situation so management through crisis not through uh, you know preventive maintenance you know stitching time saves nine all the good stuff no 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 let's take that money let's take this dollars and use it somewhere else on uh, policing is what this was used on so the the um, the bridge money was used literally on policing. The bridge money was it was allocated from the bridge construction, from roadway construction, to policing. Policing then turns around with their new jobs that they get, as they say now they do allocate. They tell them quotas. So bring us in more tickets, more felonies more more revenue producing so this is just big government finding a way to make to take money away from here management through crisis making more 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 policing which is just a strong arm of the government right the gestapo of the government who then turn around and they tell them hey give us some quota pay for your own job by ticketing putting in felonies bringing people to court Making sure that they're getting probation and 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 fines and things like that to get it, which all goes to the back to the government, not not you know some to pay for the policing, but they don't even have the decency to to just say, look, you know, if you can't sustain yourself, well, then we need to dial down policing, you know, and it shouldn't be sustained like that anyway. That should just be a cost. So the uh, this money. Was for the bridge construction was allocated to to the corporation, to the government, the government Pittsburgh, for example. Um, and it's it's a little deeper than that, but it's 100 percent. This money was allocated to policing. So let's look at the dollar value. The previous recommendations, not the current. The previous recommendations were to drill these holes, these crack holes, paint areas, extend PVC, upgrade safety. Um, repair four legs repair four legs right remember that repair four legs let's look at let's go up now oh now they got dollar value with it and this is the current one short term immediate it says immediate which is the same as current it's a current day one immediate improvements huh four legs 40 grand Double asterisk. All right, 40 grand. There's your price for repairs, spall curbs, uh, upgrade safety features to PennDOT standards, 4K, PVC drainage, um, paint areas that, were that, you, that you can paint because weathering steel, you're not supposed to paint it. Uh, drill crack areas right here. Drill, this is crack arrest, 9,000 bucks. Upgrade bridge rails. This is uh, the codes, the priority code. Repair damage far back wall, 170 grand. Upgrade bridge rail systems. All right, safety rail systems, obviously. It's not that critical. That's level two. Um, prior code, uh, repair small, um, flush steel, remove all that debris. Interesting, he's saying remove the debris now, where then you would evaluate it. You think uh, that's going to require an another evaluation at that point. Maybe the double asterisk does address that. 
but you can see um, clean clean scuppers 500 bucks move the debris 500 bucks trees 210 it's pretty cheap actually all three of those uh, the uh, but you see the prior was here a maintenance issue was was issued on 9 20 9 2020 um, a priority zero maintenance letter was written priority zero maintenance letter was issued short-term improvements within the next two years so you see that they said two years to do this and this was never done it was never done this the new inspection is above us here and now it becomes priority but it doesn't get done okay so th this part of the document is critical this is redacted see the blackout so the recommendations frequency 12 months all right so this wasn't like come back in two weeks that's what they were stating but 12 months not not two years all right so that's a tell two year is normal 12 months this guy wants to come back this team wants to come back and and check this damn thing out again remember they did not inspect underneath with the with the uh, truck the inventory rating tons operating rating tons all redacted now let's talk about that bus my guess is that bridge was not rated for the bus that bridge was not rated for the bus it was down to below that rating for the for the bus and this is what they're doing government protecting themselves allowing this redaction because the bus would have been the kill would have been the killer of the bridge that swing that I talked about in the beginning now now this is uh, bias on my part because I did this video as I went ahead I didn't have access to this tab or anything else I didn't do this ahead of time I'm getting this you're seeing chronologically as I get it as I present to you guys that's the way I do it I don't um, you know do all this preparation stuff you're getting it as I hear the motorcycle you're getting it as I, I jump into it and this is the even though I'm saying I'm that's why you'll see me say I'm done then all of a sudden I'll continue more because I'll I'm say I'm done I'll hit this stop button and then I'll read more and I'm like oh wow this is very telling so this is a huge tell for us right here this is this rating this dropped this dropped below that bus that's the only thing on there if it was above the bus rating then they wouldn't have redacted it that's my conclusive file with a sur surety of 99.9 percent .9 that this is this is nefarious this is um conspiratorial because they had they have full knowledge and they're trying to cover up evidence after the fact that this bus this bridge should have the rating should have been lowered the bridge rating should have been reduced it was not it was not published it was not done that's what I'm sticking with now it might be a bit of a troll in there to force them to come out with it but I'm telling the news reporters to look into this this reduction and you'll see possibly maybe you can find notification to the uh, notification to um, uh, PennDOT um, to uh, the uh, what's that Pittsburgh transportation you know the bus the bus transportation whatever they call themselves p dot pa dot whatever the pittsburgh is so i'll show you that this this part is no longer 26 tons right there was this 26 tons because this this canceled out this above operating tons inventory rating tons that this cancels it out that this is redacted that this was going to be a reduction that this is the previous the current currently posted bridge weight load posting review this bridge restriction is necessary because the bridge members cannot carry the legal loads safely what did you just say it can't carry the legal load safely what are the legal loads what are the legal loads and according to section 49.2 of the pa we recommend the structure remain posted as is Oh, okay, so you're saying 26 tons, and why are you, I, I know where I'm going with this, guys, then why did you change this? If, it, if this is your recommendation, why did you, why did you redact this? Why are these numbers redacted? Why are they all removed? 
because maybe there's a further restriction that we need to find. Hold on. Okay, so now let's debunk my water issue here. This is a lip that's steel. So it looks like that. That's that steel right there. This would be a nice ledge to look for rot. Capillary action. Under here I would look for water staining. So I don't see any. So not debunking but just showing that this is clear of issues. That that section is. I look down here. It's, it appears clear of issues here also. I mean that top steel looks pretty good. Uh, from a you know the lighting issue lighting there this is the weight restriction that um, they said it needs to be this is bridge half mile ahead 26 tons that they need to remove the bus uh, the um, it's a mix here speed limit and weight restriction speed limit okay there's the bike lane. This is the mix that they're not supposed to do this. They're not supposed to mix this sign and this sign together. They're supposed to be separate. This appears to be the, the scuppers possibly clogged. I can't tell. Um, but nevertheless, debris. There's a fracture here. Asphalt, asphalt fractures. Um, right there's a water stain or a white efflorescence. Here, here, here. Okay, let me tell you a lot of a lot of water. A lot of water volume. Um, bridge expansion joint right here. Neoprenes, rubber, if you will, rubber roofing. And it's it's down here. I'm taking some liberty with the wings, just showing you it's clamped. Here's the clamp the section here. The top here and there's a rubber. Looks like that. This section here is the water you see, acting like a trough. The water retention tells you that the rubber is not broken, that it's not leaking out, at least. And I, I don't know the design of this one, but this concrete, see here and here, shows you how this is not just, this, this is engaged like steel, and, and then this goes like that, and the side's got steel on it, embedded in this concrete. Bedded in the concrete, and then they put the neoprene rubber on, and then they secure the the neoprene down. This allows it to expand and contract, crush inwards. Obviously, the expansion um, is more that direction. You can see the buckling of the asphalt, what it looks like buckling, and then here's a transition down and then up. That's just a, another problem for water to start screwing this thing up. What do they state? Uh, far uh, armored neoprene strip seal se at 75 degrees. Okay, so they're doing the temperature variations. So I don't know the elevations, but I would guess the water comes down to the end, and that end on that far, the far end on up down there, and current of top of the bridge being the highest, perhaps. Water flowing down across the expansion joints. And out she goes. Maybe some of it. Usually this expansion joint at the end. Usually has a, a leak right here at the ends of the expansion joints. So the underside is looking pretty nice. I mean this, this metal there looks like I'm looking at the flange part of it right here. Right there. It's not deteriorated as much. There's going to be some sections obviously. but And you've got your concrete. Your decking there, and your stringers, and your, your bracing. Your I'm sorry, your bracing. Okay, it's steel bracing. This this image makes it look great, but remember the guy shooting from the ground. He's not actually under there with that device. And then they use the uh, software to remove the rest. Nope, there are the trees right there. He just exposed it to do this and it's overexposed here so it blows it out to white these are these are citizens see the graffiti these are citizens uh citizen um um, um engineers going around protecting bridges by spray painting them citizen citizen engineers you gotta love them they do a lot of that everywhere it's actually a good tale to tell you once it's been painted, you can look at the surface, see if it's blistering or not. 
paint it, spray paint. Yeah, that, that looks, you know, from this imagery, that looks pretty good. I mean, again, the bottom web, top web, stiffeners, all this stuff looks pretty, pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look like, you know, something's not out of kilter just by taking a quick glean at it. This is a cross bracing in here, down to there, budding there. You don't see it rusted through, nor here. So it looks like the legs down the bottom are the issues on this deal. Let's keep looking. So I zoomed in on this one and this one here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's white or not. Columns, water, cross bracing. Yeah, can't tell from here, but uh, I don't see the, is that, oh, there's a the cable right there. Is that the cable? Right here, the cabling. And they they did a 2014 tightening of the cable. I think they put the cables in an 09. So five years later, they came back, did a tightening of the cables. So, uh, hmm, question is why did the cables need tightening? Mm-hmm, and there are the cables there. So you got some redundancy. One, two. One, two, and they crossed them like that. They crossed them. So right there, you can see these are open here. So the opposite of that would be crossed there also. They crossed this center here. Let's see if they cross there. Now these are open. Anchored there and there. So it doesn't matter. The two anchor point, the one single anchor point here, I think, and then single here. Up here, we got two. It could be a you know an anchor like that, or two anchors. I'd like to see them. Let's see if they if they identify them. Uh, this is the downspout, maybe the drain, the white pipe, and what the hell's going on here then? So I'm not too sure, but let's take a look. Hmm, definitely not sure. Okay, so there's a drain. There's the drain box and the uh, concrete here is kind of weird. Hmm, they added these steel. The other's wood. This is all, maybe this is all new construction. It says 100% closed off. That doesn't look like 100% closed off. See, it has redundancy. There's a the scupper, the opening, and then there's the drain the, the going through the box that way. So it's it's two ways. It can come this way. And then there's your totally clogged. Instead of flooding out, now it'll flood in here and down it goes. This is the scupper um, section here. It's the box drain. Okay. Here, here's a better image of that. Look at that. See that? So this is clogged 100% reportedly already. Whatever. And then it goes to theirs. So I don't see 100%. Uh, do you guys? I don't know where they're getting off with 100% on that. Yeah. Wait a minute. They actually say it right here. It says, uh, you know, at the inlet box, inlet, minor debris, open and functional. Yet we saw 100% scuppers closed. So let's find we the scupper. We still got to identify then what the hell he means by where his scupper is. Okay, they, they do talk about efflorescence and things like that. This appears to be a painted sidewalk. Uh, presents as painted. And also there's asphalt here. So it's, it's asphalt can take the salts much better than the concrete and the water. And it, you've got, you know, it's butted up against here. And you can see where it's breaking through is where the plants are um, going from there. Okay, I hope this is the scupper. This one looks pretty clogged. Let's see, let's see. Yep, typical deck scupper, 100% clogged. And I'd go with that. You know, it's, it's not, it's hard, it's got some blockage. But it looks more like that. So as the water level, obviously, apparently can go right all, all the way in here. So I'm not sure about 100%, but 
the uh, they're claiming 100 percent no i wouldn't say that's 100 percent i say no more than us that's not a hundred but it's uh you know it's the intent is there to get it cleaned so calling it 100 percent i think it's fair game to get your intent your your drain addressed immediately so these look like repairs are taking place from concrete there's plywood and that's the formwork or it's for debris dropping down so that might be for debris and then this one's debris and then here we have um, the drain system PVC so it's been updated coupling existing old metal pipe metal existing piping the concrete deck is here above um, and so between these two guys here um, what's the intent there to stop the debris from falling down people under the bridge what the hell are you doing under there uh, or falling into the water perhaps and but that's a sign indicator that your your uh, the concrete's crumbling how about that crumbling now that baby's 100% block look at that that's the floor one and that's the scupper right there that baby's 100% he wrote that one up as 100%. Alright, that one, you can't argue that one. You know what, maybe I should scroll through this and let you guys see what I'm looking at. The images I'm not showing, or I'm just briefing through. Like, it's just spalling there. So, you know, it's, it, this could be salts, maybe not. Um, you know, you see a patch needs to be done. You know, don't know, don't know how it got there. We look at the efflorescence. I'll see if I can speed, speed, speed this through. Your salts, it means a lot of water Water doing this. Um, there it is down there. And there's some major deterioration there, it looks like. And right in front of us. Like I said, I'll try to fast forward these. Yeah, that thing is just friggin' everywhere. Look at that. That's, incidentally, it's, it's, it's big, but it's, uh, here, this is the steel beam. That's the steel beam there, so you're looking at a section between them. These lines represent, i got to have a little fun. Let me have my fun. They represent uh, where cables were for the Internet, for you uh, um, people that only know the Internet. It's got to be only, it's got to be the Internet, right? Hold on. I'm, I'm just learning right now. Okay, just learning because I don't get to do this much. Oops. Okay, the lines are so great. It gives me something to work from. They're, they're wood. When this was built, they're uh, strips of wood, maybe six or eight inches, just seeing the way they converge with this camera lens. And that's the focal point, maybe, considering the image is uncropped. Here's our, our, let me do that one. Okay, it's probably straight. Nope, that's not straight right there. It's opened up. All right, so we can do tick marks on this. Let's go back. So that's 6, 12. It's about, wow, it's only about two feet what they did here. What he did there. All right, so the... Uh, Two feet, some change. But the down here, I'm just looking at the, let me look at this again. I'm just learning from it. Yep, the lines, the converging lines, how they work and all. All right, good. Um, exposed rebar and section loss. Yeah, well, section loss is where, maybe it's over there, maybe it's here. Over here, now we're getting that, that the edge of the bridge right out here. See it? The overhang, the cantilever. Here's the steel back here. Here's the cantilever. Maybe that is electric there at that time, not a joke. Maybe that is a conduit for lighting, etc. Here, in, across here, is your uh, uh, efflorescence, uh, cracked it, water penetration that mirrors itself pretty good. Um, this was done, a repair was done at one time because remember we just saw plank boards. Now you don't see plank boards. Now you see a line here and a line there. Now we're into plywood, so this was a 
a repair done. I'm not sure when. Not sure when. Um, in, note to self. Bre bre breezing through again. Oh, we have a drain here. What the hell is this? Um, let's see what he says. Uh, active dripping slab drain with a head spalling exposed rebar. Okay, yeah. All right, so it's probably clogged the top up top. And the water is going seeping through the concrete there, through the asphalt and concrete, exposing and freezing, um, and the rust getting the, the metal rust jacking, expanding and popping, spalling off the concrete dislocation, which would be like that. Let's go. All right, this is much better. I mean, it's beautiful. So that's beautiful. Um, this lip is beautiful. All the way down is beautiful. That looks okay from visually from here. This looks all beautiful, you know, dimensionally. Um, and it says typical girder. Okay. Right girder shown. Yeah, it's, it looks beautiful. And there it is again. Nope, that's a floor beam. Yeah, it's a floor beam. See? I saw it was a floor beam because I saw this goes back to here. So these are floor beams. These are little stringers on top. Go to the next floor beam. And then the bridge, the concrete structural deck goes on. And then the asphalt in this case. They asphalt it also, which is all more loading. So, you know, that tonnage, is it counted with the, uh, as, with the asphalt overload? Yeah, it should be. Let's uh, look at this again. This is blown out, but the... That might be plywood, because dimensionally th this looks the same, same, but not this one, not this one, or this one. This looks more like, uh, uh, maybe it's plywood in here and it's just blown out, the lighting. I can't tell, but that's what I theorized for just a moment. All right, so the connections, you know, the, the stiffeners, so this is these guys here, and they're here, see them, see them everywhere, every there, these are stiffeners. Keep this from uh, twisting. These are this is the critical. You want them to look nice. When I say nice structurally, there's your cross bracing. All right, coming back to us. There is the stiffeners for these guys, right? The the floor beams, and then you got your stringers, your joists, your joists, floor joists, and these are stiffeners here. Drain system. All right, looking good so far. We got a cross brace down here or something of that nature. Question. And we slide down. All righty. So now we got that water stains I'm talking about right here. It's identified as girder elevation. Oh, that's great. Let's see what they got here. Um, I want to read it. I want to do this first before I scroll up. So here's it looks like the elevation point is here. It says section welds. Maybe that's internal section weld elevation um, south girder. Okay, so something's there. It had measured it here. This is some wire and conduit, perhaps. But this is, look, appears to be water. So now let's scroll up and see what they got. It says, uh, span one right girder between floor beams, five and six typical intersecting wells. Okay, so they just want to see the wells. They look there. All right. Didn't comment that it's bad or not. Now we're getting into shit. Those things are friggin' worn out. They are rusted out. They did say there were some uh, rivets here. These are obviously bolts. Nuts and bolts. They are deteriorated, and this is all deteriorated. Wow, this is just shit. And this is a structural connection. Now, let's see what the hell they say. Right girder between floor beam 7 and 8. Up to 50% section loss in, in bolts on inside face of girder splice plate. Yeah, it's friggin' huge. That's huge. Okay, so 50% loss. What was it before, and why didn't he do a reduction? Well, the reduction is hidden from us, isn't it? Something's hidden. And there is what you guys call um, stalactites. 
It's your salts, your efflorescence. This took years to do this. Um, there is a steel in here. It's little golf balls. This is all done. That's a supporting column. This is shit. It says, girder between floor beams 10 and 11. Active leak through weep hole causing laminar, laminar corrosion, which means uh, delamination. Delamination of all this. There is another beam here. See it? And then the, the, the column, and then here's the beam. Here's the brace into this one. Obviously, it's there, but I can't see it. I can't make it out. Okay, maybe this is all... Maybe this is all steel here. Can't make it out. Okay, North Girder, span three. All right, these bolts look better. There is sign, There are signs of water coming down here. So um, even with that said, you don't see that these bolts are really getting, getting the shit knocked out of them. But there's obviously standing water here of some nature. These look excessively, compared to these, excessively water drenched. Um, section I would I would pick on that section to the this section here okay so this is going to be a splice again left grip between floor beams is up to 40% section loss in bolts with one bolt with 75% section loss on inside face of girder splice okay there you go oh nice nice so you guys see that full penetration let's see what they say 100% um, section loss Hole and bottom left girder splice plate. This is between 13 and 14. Wow, look at the rust and all the delamination here. Yep, okay. So, 9 inch long bent. Uh, whoa. What the hell did that happen? Looks like a. What the hell did that happen? Yeah, it says it there. Bowed steel. Yeah, how the hell did that happen? So this will be, remember the stiffeners? I'm considering this wasn't installed this way. Um, so this, well, that, this, this end here, yeah, that's a tough one. It's an end, it's not a stiffener. Oh, there are two of them meeting, they, they are meeting. So I would look to, want to know if there's a bolt hole there. Is it one there? It says, um, yeah, stiffener. See, stiffener. Um, okay, let's move on. Cut NC20. Oh. I don't know what that's for. Somebody put a cut in there. No change. All right, so this might not be as bad. This might be part of the detail. There's the, are we in the rivers now? Nope, that's bolted. Um, it's like this weird zone going on here. So this was welded here. And maybe there's a, 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 uh, 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 a reaction. I said allergy for a second there. Allergic reaction. Uh, I like that. I like that. That guy might help you better understand it. It was... Uh, the um so noble the higher say everything you would put all the steel the same kind of steel right here there'll be no reactions as you get further down you start getting your reactions as you guys might know it as electrolysis but as you get further apart say this steel is uh stainless steel and down here is just typical regular metal the regular metal will ride out Whichever one's higher up will stay more so than the one below. So this is being, if this was aluminum, this would ride out in contact with this. So this is kind of a pattern I've seen with around welds that can contaminate and retemper the metal. You know, like if you can imagine the heat zones overlapping here, giving you just one zone like that. And the, the, the welding rod is different than the steel, parent steel. Now, I've just seen it that way, and I correlated to that. I correlated to that. 
All right, so this is pretty rush jacking in the middle here. It's separating, delaminating, flaking apart. There's the bolt holding it together, but this is the dimensions here. You can see the layers of it now just peeling apart. Um, let's see what it says. Laminar corrosion, yep. See right there. All right, moving up. We have a date. Oh, pausing. We've got dates. 16, 18, 19, and the inspections. And so they've known about this being an issue way back then. We're talking out to, what's the issue here? Let's see if we can see the issue. So that reading their description, I can't tell actually. And I can't tell where I'm looking. I think it's the inside, inside connection is your deck inside connection so I can't tell what we're looking at it says crack at top of connection plate okay to girder web weld me measures one inch okay there's a crack up there that measures one inch well I still can't see it but yep take the word for it okay so now we got a flange again a uh, stiffener flange um, not welded so no weld here so this is Supposed to be bought now. What does it say? Um, what does it say? Dates 18, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, cracker top of connection plate to girder. Web weld measures one inch. No change since the last inspection. So somebody had half inch, now they're at one inch. Okay, better detail now. Now we know what we're looking for. Let's just speed it up. Three quarters inch, no change. Okay. Now we're talking. That's a hell of a lot of that's a hell of a water line, a water table. Look at that. Hell of a water table. Toast. So the bottom flange is gone now. Here's your bottom flange. This area here. Let's be fair, I only see this side, the three sides of it. Bottom flange is gone. So basically we got T-beams in there like that right now. T-beams, this is fully cracked. This is just bullshit. Let's look at it. Uh, yep, they say, they say L. Area laminate corrosion, 1 16th section loss. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that. I see a full fracture there. This looks like full fractures. You see the the, the table there. It's the different variations. This thing is this this is dimensionally lost material. Doesn't matter because this is no longer there. So I mean, you could probably maybe it picks up further down. This looks dimensionally lost. Maybe it picks up further down. Let's see. Let, let's do the T beam, right? Let's. Um, I'm gonna do it from this way. So maybe it's the bottom flange right here. This is this section here. Okay, so. This section here. I'm sorry, not the rotted section, but this the bottom flange. All right, and then maybe uh, this section here we'll call it green. All right, all this is green, so this is now missing. And then let's pick it back up. So you can see that there's a huge section missing here. So you're, you got this T beam that looks something like that. This is bullshit. I don't know how he came up with that numbers of uh look at that it's uh section loss is only one sixteenth. Yeah, I, I mean you know, what's he saying inside there it looks like that. Yeah, depth is one sixteenth. Well there's a fracture plane developing here, isn't it? And this is really troublesome. Okay, uh Miss Punched, ML punched holes. Okay. So this is a fit and finish. So somebody is attempting to do something there. Nevertheless, this looks to stable here. If you're looking to see if it's intent. It looks like a well there to hold it temporarily. On this side. Um, and then the, uh, so these don't look shearing. They're not shearing from each other. The true shear. 
They look like they're in place. I don't see any movement around the outside edge here. If I can magnify it with you looking at it real close, you're looking at it's not shifting. Here's the bolt, and then here's the ghost of it next to it, if you will. Meaning it moved over. You don't see that. So these two are in interaction pretty stable. Gets you on the missed punch. Let's see what they state here. Mistrial holes and connection plate. Okay, interesting though, what's more interesting about these mistrial holes is what do you notice? What is standing out on this one? Remember, photography, um, this is a flash taking place. And they used a flash in here, here's some lighting. But what's going on here? A reflection is coming back. A reflection is coming back. And this is theoretically missed these holes when this bridge was built. Why is it so damn clean? Why is that so damn clean, those edges? This, that is very, uh, not, not typical. All right, so there's a little deterioration. Um, ledge peeling, here's some flaking here, splitting here. These are the stiffeners I told you guys about. There might be some delamination here. There's a daylight here. This comes back to maybe the abutment. I'm not sure. Let's scroll up. Laminate corrosion throughout. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Okay. So, there's going to be a fracture again. Um, all right. Um, did you, maybe that was not... I saw the daylight. Let's look at that daylight again. Get out of my way. Okay. It's questionable whether it's daylight now. It's very questionable because of this one looks similar. I have a reflection of white, so I'm not sure what I was looking at. Okay. And same difference. Same difference. There's your water line your water your water line. Your water path. Um, yep, moving on. Yeah, it's going to be significantly more dates 2016, 2020. Yeah, okay, same thing. This whole damn bridge is just fracturing all up. I wonder, you know, when they tightened it in 2014, did that tightening create a lot of these, these fractures uh, as the bridge became stiffer? Uh, not being able to more rigid creating more brittle fractures all right so this might be there just a, a highlighter they use to indicate off of oh yeah that's that's beautiful yeah so the uh is the engineers working again the graffiti on concrete they should have worked up here Frozen the bottom flange. Okay, so that's got some separation here. These two are not working together, are they? Although that looks like a mini weld. Let's see what they say here. The dimensions, though, look stable. It looks pretty thick. It says bolts not fully seated. Okay, there we go. Bolts not fully seated. Um, let's go on here. Well, oh, just deterioration. Oh, yeah. That one's shot. Now that's a, uh, a uh, floor beam going across from here to here. And this one they just were able to put the concrete on. No, no joist needed. Let me look at that. <clears throat> Bracing down below. Vaulting. I might have to reserve on that one. All right, so now we're at the abutment. I don't know what this is made of. Are these are cushions or not, rubber or not. All water, rust, terrible, rust. Piece of metal just hanging there like that. And what's their notation? Minor debris accumulating surface rust and moderate rust pack. Well, they mixed it up, isn't it? It's moderate and moderate, moderate and modern, uh, moderate and um, minor. Okay, 
So it looks a little, I'm just looking for deflection, like right here, even here, or here. They're offset. Let's see what they say about that. Uh, minor debris accumulation, okay. Huh. Okay. And minor debris. Mm hmm. Oh, that, 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 that right there is uh, beautiful. I don't know. This is beautiful. That thing is fully connected, as you can see right here. Fully connected using the uh, air air gap. Um, hold on, let me have a little fun here. Air gap metal. So when metal can get so close to each other, it can send off uh, magnetism to hold itself together. Look at all this brakes and all. This is just craziness. Of course, you guys know I'm teasing about the air gap metal. This is just that's that's a, that'll do it. Now, this is a column. We're at the base there. See the ground is below. These are stiffeners. This is the steel dimension, which looks nice. The stiffener is very small in nature. And the stiffener, the metal again, we could be at a different different metal again and have a noble issue. You know, the noble scale. And here's the rotting here. Because this is not deteriorated. I mean, it's not. This looks, that edge looks looks like new money. This edge here and that edge, they look like new money. So this looks like uh, there's some um, some dissimilar metals here, reaction. Now, with that said, these shelves are all the way down. So water, if it was going to come down a column, it would hit these shelves and also create a lot of deterioration all the way down. Typical for left frame leg bent, 100% um, section loss in the stiffeners. Agreed. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is the one that uh, um, went down. This just looks like a... Okay, that's the cabling. That's the uh, bar they added. And it's, it's, it's secured here. So the torque is here. The rotation's here. Cost is bracing here. So if this goes... This might deform and, and, and cause it'll collapse. It says, right frame leg, 100% section loss in web. This still looks connected. This is galvanized versus this material. And there's a plate that connects, a bolt that connects. And hmm. Things that make you say, hmm. Okay, so now we're at another bra uh, uh, support. I guess that's the leg going down. And this is just done. Look at the daylight. It's just done. What does it say? Um, bottom of the top brace. Okay, right. All right, bent. Okay, so that's done. Done. I mean, what do you? What do you I mean? Look at this stuff, guys. Just that brace coming in, like that. This is the the uh, stiffener. This is the the gusset plate that it ties into, and it's fully deteriorated. But look at the house deteriorated again. It reminds me again of dissimilar metals I talk about with welding. It doesn't appear to be bolted connection. And the dissimilar metals in the uh, welding material um, reacting. Look at that. See the corrosion? But it already started. It broke free and then it kept eating its way back. Look at that. Not on this side though. This side. Not on this side. This is the side that got eaten back. This is the side that got eaten back. So let's put our, our uh, this metal. This is metal A, two, metal two. And then let's, let's just go with the assumption this is metal one. Two different metals and the reaction starts. Doo -doo -doo. Now, why is it back here? Unknown to me. Daylight all the way through. So, Defective metal, defective metal. It's just the way it's rotten out. It's just, it doesn't make sense because this would still, water would still take this path down. 
it's just a bottom so it want to do that but then you'd have to have it jammed up here in debris and then here's another spot it would have to sit there I don't know, I'd like to see some water some water sitting there somehow. Alright, butt mints, what does it say? Uh, stone pushed up to near left, okay. Alrighty, and then we rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, nothing really. I mean, that, that seems pretty significant. Ah, there we go. Deflection, fracture, spalling. There's the connection. And that looks like the, re the reinforcement that... Um, the bars they use, post tension bars, rods, not just cabling. There's a daylight hole supports. Drainage system, if it gets clogged, this is how you clean it out. And it goes down. Incidentally, I, don't, I hope there's more piping there. Otherwise, you're just running into the edge of your own foundation. Um, note edge spall with exposed rebar. Okay. Same thing here, mirror image of it, so duplication of it. Probably, okay, there's your extension. This looks like water, serious amount of water. See the white here, and then this is all stained. Okay, the engineers are out there. Miss MRRK. Uh, far right thrust block. Again, thrust block. Oh, a little exposed rebar and the bolts are really getting a lot of water on them, but they're holding up. Yeah. Famous last words. Huge deterioration. Just flaking, rust jacking. This is on its way to the junk scrapyard. Okay, hopefully that's it. Come on. Ugh. Look, I hope that, you know what, it's an hour and seven minutes. I'm going to end this video. Um, I think I'll give you the link here. Looks like we made the page 59. At one point, I didn't show you the a lot of that stuff, but I'm done with this. You guys can enjoy it. You, you've got the data. Make your own conclusions. And, again, oh, now I guess I want to show you that, the dollars, that this was taken from, the bridge construction was taken and given to policing. So there it is, you guys can Google it. Bridge Collapse Reviews Criticism, this is this company, whatever did it, that, that, this is another one. Oh, criticism over using road dollars for police. All right, ending video, take care, love you guys, bye.